Hey guys, what is up? We are back with some Halo Wars 2 content for you and today we're going to be dipping into the advanced leader guides. Today's video is going to be covering Captain Cutter in all aspects including the best builds, strategies, when to and when not to use your leader powers to gain an advantage in the battle as well as what army composition to use early, mid and late game. So to start, Captain Cutter is a very fast paced and infantry based leader with a lot of tools for harassment and stuns for the use of his unit drops and specific kit. With the recent buff to his close air support we saw the popularity of Captain Cutter skyrocket and his place in the meta also improve. So let's jump right into his leader powers and how to use them to gain the best possible advantage. Okay guys, so we already covered the build order videos uh, in our beginner's build order guides for each and every leader. Um, so now we're going to be showing you the leader power order, what leader powers you should choose for Captain Cutter, and how you string those leader powers together to gain an advantage. So we're just going to give a quick explanation of the leader powers and what order you should be taking, and jumping straight into it here now. So basically, the first leader point you should be taking with Captain Cutter you got Battle Hardened or you have UNSC Raid. Now, 100% all of the time, no matter what anybody says, always go UNSC Raid. Battle Hardened is a complete meme and it's completely pointless, especially since the uh, veteranacy aspect of the game is broken. If you didn't know to gain vet experience on a unit, you have to be stood still and get a kill stood still to do it, which is extremely hard to do with units that aren't heroes. So it's not really benefiting Captain Cutter in any way whatsoever. And this gives a nice 10% speed boost to all of your units. It's going to help you uh, get to resources faster and help you build, build be a lot smoother in the early game and it also gives a 50% capture rate and a decapture rate to the power nodes which means you're going to cap this power node a lot faster than your opponent can and you're going to decap their nodes a lot faster than your opponent can as well so in an intense game back to back where you're trading power nodes all of the time uh, and always go for the power nodes because they help so much uh, in the game 1.5 power per second per power node you have which is absolutely huge to put that in perspective uh, an upgraded generator is six power per second so essentially you have four power nodes you you've got another upgraded generator which potentially could have got you to like 800 supplies now second point can be situational and kind of match up dependent so I would say that if you're going to be going infantry such as marines, flamers, sniper, you want to be going raid too because that gives you, puts your speed boost up to 17% and then it gives you 100% capture rate and still a 50% decapture rate uh, on the power node. So you're going to be getting those nodes even faster. Your army is going to be super fast. You can kite your opponents with the snipers uh, using your, your micro um, to outplay your opponent uh, with the snipers and things like that which is going to really help you so that's why we'll be going raid 2 if we're playing the infantry style and really the only time you want to be playing the kind of infantry style is if you're playing another unsc player so if you're playing banished i wouldn't recommend just going all out in infantry you're probably going to need a hero there most of the time uh, sometimes it can swap and can be quite situational but this is just a general rule of thumb if you want to get to the next step and get better like get into onyx get into champion just follow these like these simple guidelines and then when you are at champ you start learning the game and picking up the game a lot more that's when you can delve into the the little minorities and the little different matchups that you can change interchange your builds into uh for better so UNSC Raid 2, when you're playing against uh, a UNSC player, because you want to be going snipers against them generally, um, they're going to go hero, or they're going to go snipers, or they're going to go infantry, and because you've got 70% speed, you're just going to always win that battle and kite them uh, and be able to beat them a lot easier uh, than they can beat you. So the other time, or the second leader point you could rotate into, um in the matchup is if you're playing against banished so if you're against a banished player generally at a high level they'll be building a lot of choppers so you'll be wanting a lot of marines with grenade throw but you'll also want your spartan so you'll want your hero now a really good combo for the spartan slam is the lotus mites so what you want to do with the lotus mites is you want to spartan slam an army then immediately drop the mines um, after you spartan slam because the army is going to be stunned 
while the mines arm and the mines set off and basically blow up uh, the enemy army giving you a big advantage for little to no micro whatsoever so your third leader power uh, is always odst this there's no reason not to go odst it's so good uh, you you can stun with it uh, you drop them in it's free units and that's one of the advantages of Kota. you're getting free drops uh, every so often every two minutes or so um, so that's really good that's pretty explanatory it's got got the mines as well that you can drop with them so the satchel mines actually do really good base damage really good army damage the only thing is that armies can run away from them once you drop them quite easily so you need to combo them with the spartan slam as well and at the end of this section of the video we'll show you some of those combos so leader point number four uh, you got either turret drop, you got cyclops drop, you got archer missiles, or you've got heal. So in this situation, um, generally you'll go cyclops drop when you're playing against forge, uh, but in nearly every situation you'll be going archer missiles because it's so strong and it synchronizes with your combo of the Spartan slam, the ODST slam, and stuns as well. Um, another thing I should mention in the raid two category is. You'll want to go raid 2 only in the UNSC matchup against Jerome. The reason for that is because Jerome's Inspire Aura actually makes his units faster than raid 1, but not faster than raid 2. So in order to catch that Jerome leader and his army, you need raid 2 to do it. Uh, to just backtrack on that one. So your fifth leader power. In this situation, your fifth leader power, generally in a close game, you're not going to have 1500 supply to spend on close air support. If you have 1500 supply to spend on close air support, you're about to close the game. You've got a beef, beefy army, you, you're on two or three bases, you've got a lot of nerds, you've got a great army, uh, uh, full pop basically, and you're about to push an opponent's base. The only time to take close air support over the odst assault group is like if they're on one base they've got four turrets and you want to push right now and break that base you'll choose close air support if not always go odst's assault group even if you can't afford it at the time because it's expensive it's such a good drop for the situation you have it and again it provides those stuns onto the army which can win engagements so if you can try and ch um line up your drops uh with the with the fights that you're going into to be able to stun and use all these leader powers together Let's break some heads. then you're really going to win every fight essentially with your micro so going into the sixth leader power uh, if you've got a lot of money like if you're ahead if you're really far ahead you'll be going close air support if you're behind you probably want to go cyclops drop if they're going vehicles get another unit drop or you can go turret drop uh, get an extra stun or you can go heal heal your army this this is the point where it really gets situational and you can start mixing things up with it otherwise you can put a lot of points into archer missiles which does a lot of damage to your opponents so this is us covering the leader power section of the videos now we're going to jump into some real game scenarios and show you how you actually use these leader powers okay guys so we've slowed the video down just so you can see exactly what's happening here so what you want to do in a cutter combo first is you want to drop your odst squad to get like a two to three second stun that's not long enough to hold the army in place while you drop your satchel mines but you drop the satchel mines as soon as they drop and then you immediately spat and slam on top of the army and that's going to lock them into place and allow the mines to go off as you'll see now uh, after that or during that as uh, we saw in the clip you can drop the archer missiles on the armor you're not going to hit to damage them and get full impact of your cutter combo okay so in this next part of the video we're going to be showing a full length game of captain cutter the game actually lasts around 30 minutes so it is a pretty decent game um to review and show you guys what you should be doing from tech one all the way through to tech three and the late game with captain cutter and uh, the matchup's actually against yap yap on bedrock which is uh, a really tough matchup for cutter and very good for yap yap due to the narrow size of the map you can get off a lot of these leader powers and steal your mini bases as well so there's going to be quite a few tips in there on how to deal with that matchup specifically on that map uh, and because it's a, such a long game of 30 minutes we can see how you should be playing 
Captain Cutter from a generic point of view, from take one to take three. But obviously, as we all know, in certain games, they can get a bit competitive. Um, you're scrambling all over the place, building units, you're building the wrong units and things like that. Um, and it all comes down to the matchup, who, which opponent you're against, and things can always change. That's why you should always be scouting and reacting to what your opponent's doing. Uh, there's no one exact way to play every leader because things do change slightly, but this should give you a good overview of Captain Cutter and how to play him. So let's jump straight into that video now. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you are going into games like this and analysing, you want to check the map, check the matchup, and then start thinking of a strategy straight from the start of what you're actually going to do so you don't get confused. So playing Yab Yab on Bedrock is pretty simple. Um, you need to grab all three of your minis as soon as possible because they will be sending three units across to your side to steal them from you. So the first thing you want to do is Build one marine, and you'll see in a lot of my other videos, I normally start with two marines. Uh, immediately supply pad, and you want to path your starting two marines across to the uh, two supply bundles. So raid one is obviously going to help us a lot here, get into the resources faster. So you'll see we went straight to the center supply bundle there to collect that and the third marine went off to the side as well. So immediately as soon as that marine has picked up the supply there, we'll be pushing across to the right hand side to pick up our first mini base. Now in order to do this, we are going triple supply pad just to be safe. And you'll see here the fodder's already coming. Now if we didn't have raid one in this situation, this fodder would probably get this mini base before us. Very close, but luckily we are cutter. Uh, we do just manage to grab it under our opponent's nose there, and then immediately go back round to the last one. Now we can build our generator fourth, and now we're on to collecting the supplies. So nothing too out of the ordinary in the early game here. We've managed to pick up all three of our mini bases, which is the job we needed to do. Now we can start focus on our next plan going forward. If you lose a mini base to a Yap early on like this, it's very difficult to defend against it because they will probably put a raid camp on it and they'll start spamming fodder and choppers as well. And UNSC don't have the great building damage, so it's really hard for you to retake that back with choppers and fodder around. So our strategy here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going one barracks uh, along with our Spartan as well. That's going to allow us to hopefully deal with the choppers uh, and the cannon fodder spam. Uh, which is what most yap yaps tend to do. Uh, choppers are really good against UNSC, so there's no reason not to go them. Now, because we're going Spartan, we're not going to be going Raid 2 because it's a narrow amount. We don't need to run as fast as we need to. We're going to be going Mines to combo that with our Spartan Slam. As you can see from the rest of our Marines, we are picking up every little bit of resource on the map in the early game. And then the extra blue we've got, we're going to be spamming marines out as well to be able to try and push out and take these power nodes as soon as possible to help with our hero upgrades, uh, the flamers, maybe snipers if we need them. So nothing too concerning at the moment. You'll see a lot of fodder pushing across the map. Just They're going to start doing damage on this generator. It's pretty annoying, but you should be able to deal with it. Then we see a heavy grunt coming. So immediately this indicates to me that he's going in for an all-in rush early on here, which any really good yap yap player wouldn't be doing this essentially um especially pushing up one heavy gun at a time that's allowing me to have the numbers advantage and pick them off quite quickly so we're just going to focus on defending this for a while let our uh, opponent actually lose his resources and now you'll see the grunt riders coming in so we immediately put a turret up the spartan's about to be out Noth there's nothing concerning me in this situation at the moment um, so the mines come down there, we need to be wary of them because we don't have any detect. They are going to blow up that turret, so we're going to recycle that because it is really weak and just rebuild one. So 
So the reason Yap Yap's really tough to deal with is because obviously he gets all his free fodder early on, so he can double gen early, uh, have a better economy than you quite early, and be able to pump so many units at you with the free fodder uh, as well. And look at those rams damaging the spot and almost taking his shield off. He's going to have to get out of there. Um, so because they're double gen and they're pushing as well, um, it's setting us further and further behind economy-wise for them. So we just need to survive this and kill as much as possible to try and set them behind and then push out. And that's the aim of the plan right now, just survival. We've got our mini bases, so he has to path a long way across the map. He's got no choppers, um, which is obviously worrying from his perspective because he's not doing a lot of damage here. Uh, we're pretty much dealt with this army, and we're going to swap into a second gen here just because we feel so safe. I'm going to Spartan Slam there to save our Spartan, get him out of there, uh, try and get his shields back up before the next push. As you can see, during all of this, what I did was I put a marine on hold ground in the center of the map so I could see exactly what was coming and I could react a lot faster. So we've dealt with that push, it's 4.30 in and now we've got the early ST. We can now counter push and push out onto our opponents. Now, when I look back at this game and I think about it, the safer play and the smarter play what to do would have been able to would have been to take all of these power nerds scout both expos and stop them from picking up one and pick up an expo of our own as we prepare to go into take two foolishly um obviously i was trying to catch a game that could go the length of 30 minutes so i didn't want to really end it take one but foolishly we push in with our whole army here and things start evening up again uh, which makes for a really interesting game we picked up two power nodes. Our opponent has a power node here, so we'll be taking that off them very shortly since we have map control. He's already got shade drop, so we do a Spartan slam with mines on the Grunt Riders there, the cost-effective units. They're all going to die, and uh, we're going to keep pushing up. We've still got our ODST squad in the back. Spartan is about to die. We're probably going to lose him. Not the best thing to do, um, but as you can see, he's got double raid camp up still. So he should have swapped into a double generator already. He might have one on the back mini. We don't really know that. Uh, but economy-wise, we're looking in a really good spot. Uh, we're still on the aggressive here. So already we're six minutes into the game. And we're already thinking end game here. Or trying to think end game. So the... Process with cutter essentially is you can stay on infantry for the whole game. Uh, you get combat tech marines and you spam combat tech marines, they do a lot of damage. You get your infantry upgrades, uh, your infantry becomes stronger, your drops become stronger. Because we're all pushed all the way up to his main base, we're going to pick up an expo here. Uh, we know he doesn't have fourth point yet, but we're almost there, so he must all almost be there as well, which means a possible grunts from above drop could destroy our expo. Uh, if he has the cash for it and if he has the highs for it, but we're just being annoying at the back now So I think we've taken his eyes off pushing us uh, and he's going on defense here So immediately going to be picking up that Spartan again uh, Spartan is very crucial against Yap Yap, especially when that drop comes down You want to steal a methane wagon straight away because they they change battles so much I think it's a 20% a damage increase to grunts and then a 20% debuff to the enemy team um, so 40% swing uh, can really damage your army in those battles if you don't get rid of those methane wagons quickly. So I would recommend focusing the methane wagons down first uh, before anything else. And then the grunt goblins because they can heal the army up. So we've got a nice little attack force here split off. It is pretty weak so we'll probably lose this soon. But we've still got the ODST so we can keep dropping mines no matter how weak they are. Pick off a few minis, hurt his economy more. We've scouted and seen that he's picking up an expo. We have the greater force here so we can push that and deny that immediately. Which is exactly what we're going to do. So now we're just going to build an infantry ball, get our Spartan upgrades, get our expo up and running, our economy up and running on board. Um, and we actually, because he's sticking infantry, he's going to go into rangers, heavy grunts, grunt riders in a second, which you'll see. And because he stays infantry, we commit to dispersion nozzles on those flamers to help deal with that as well. Uh, in the later game, that kind of falls off because wraiths come into play. Um, but that's when you should have your own Cyclops with Shock Rounds, Nightingales, and potentially Vultures as well, depending on your economy and how the game's going, which means you can match that uh, and do really well against that. But with hindsight in this game, uh, the way it was going, we probably wouldn't have gone Dispersion Nozzle, saved the 600 blue, gone straight into Tech 3, built 
the counter ball army of stanchion snipers, shock round cyclops, uh, basically that counter ball. And Yabby can't deal with that. Uh, it's, is very difficult for Yakbiak to deal with unless he pulls off some really good leader power combos and it's essentially because he doesn't have evade tools like teleport and things like that so here comes the Gruntum buffs now we're gonna Spartan slam it hopefully steal ah uh, there we go so we we're gonna steal the actual methane wagon and drop the mines um, to stun the army and kill it Luckily, a bit of good micro from our opponent there. He uses the rams with the grunt round uh, to stop the Spartan slam. Um, so that kind of losses that engagement there. We didn't manage to steal the methane wagon. Most of our army gets wiped. And now we're on the back foot again with 30 population and we need to rebuild. And you'll see this a lot in this game, it's just constantly end to end, end to end. Uh, and we just have to keep on top because Yap Yap's leader powers come online. Uh, they're a lot stronger than ours. Uh, they do a lot of damage if you don't avoid them. Um, so we just have to be careful and pick and choose our engagements carefully and use our leader powers carefully. I think he's got one methane wagon left, uh, which I'm going to try and steal right now. Got my leader on a control group, so I can swap to him quite quickly. Um, he's going to go check the other expo. Uh, we get a fair generator up because we need the power for these flamers, snipers, cyclops that we're going to go into on tech 3. Uh, and turrets are your best friend as UNSC, especially against Banish. They have all the, build, the building damage, you have strong turrets. Get turrets up on all your bases as quickly as possible. There we go, there goes the slam. Got the archer missiles, it's a bit late there, but we still catch the army anyway, and he gets a good stun with the shade turret. But he's got nothing to follow up with it. So we got this badge in nozzles, we're gonna melt through this army. He had no minds to follow up with the shade turrets. And we just dropped mines willy-nilly here. That really should have been comboed with an ODST job, a Spartan Slam, for example. And those mines are gonna be on cooldown for about two minutes I believe roughly so sometimes you are better off just saving your leader powers for the perfect moment rather than just throwing them out there like that and that's that's what most games come down to using your leader powers wisely but when you're in an end-to-end -end game you sometimes forget about that stuff like even in this game I forget about a lot of stuff you'll notice in the middle of the game I actually accidentally by battle hardened which really screws us in the game and we have to fight two for nil to get back into the game because that could have been a uh, leader power on close air support odst assault group a heal an arch missile something more beneficial to us than battle hardened which doesn't actually work unless your units are stood still so we made this game more difficult than it actually needed to be but at the same time it is giving a good showcase for you guys because it lasts so long if anybody didn't know, you can smoke your opponent's units with the Nightingales uh, and it'll stop them shooting. It's a, a good micro trick to split off armies and make your opponent move. Got the infantry upgrades coming in now that we've had a bit of a breather. Uh, he's not pushing anymore. Obviously, he has full node control. We just scout his expo again there. We know he doesn't have an expo essentially because uh, I don't think he'll be picking up that third base at this time in the game. So we can assume that that's going to be his first expo, his first secondary base, uh, which means we are pretty far ahead in the economy department. We just need to get these power nodes back, rebuild our army, and push out. And sometimes you have to play like this, you need to sit under your turrets and wait for your leader powers to come up and then push out. I actually go for a little sneaky play here. We're gonna we know his arm is in the middle of the maps and we've got turrets on our base, so I'm gonna try and sneak around the back uh, and pick off his expo before it gets built. Remember buildings that are being built uh, take on extra damage as well. So he's actually pushing me. He must have actually scouted um, that we were going around there somehow. So here we go. The ODST mines go down. ODST drop. Uh, we drop the mines and then we spar and slam as we showed earlier in the clip. And then our Lotus mines go down as well. Uh, and we catch a lot of units there. 
So we split his army in two and he's forced to back off. There's a lot of red bar units without shields there. And we're going to push onto it because we've got the greater army here. And then, unfortunately for us, the Grunts from above level 2 comes down, so we have to immediately back out of there because that is a losing fight. We cannot win that with all those vet units, the debuff from the methane wagons, uh, and we just have to run away. So we cancel the Marine, we're going to be going into Tech 3. And now you'll start seeing the full strength of Kota. So ultimately, our end army composition is going to be stanchion snipers. Cyclops, obviously, if they are going vehicles, which I believe in this game, he does transition to wraiths, which most banish will do. Most good, good banish players will transition into wraiths because they're very good, um, especially if you don't have vultures on the map as of yet. Um, so the only thing you'll actually need vultures for as early in this game is you'll need one or two vultures to break a base shield and your army can do the rest, your drops can do the rest, no problem. Late game, you're going to be going mass vultures um, if it becomes a stalemate and you need to take down a base. Um, that's probably the, the time to be going them. So we're going to be starting getting the stealth for the stanchion snipers now first, which is a complete waste of money. But you've got to do it to get to stanchion. Now economy is looking good, we're going to pick up a third base despite him being at our front door. Can I need reinforcements but we don't really have the power for it, obviously we lost the power nodes and we can't really get out of here at this moment in time. And there we go, we see the rifts, he's going to be pushing our main base so we have to do something about that, we're going to start upgrading our turrets, we've got three turrets on here, might as well spend our power to upgrade them. Just... Upgrading your turrets with 200 power is a lot stronger than trying to build counter units. Coming in the air, we get caught with a combo there. The Spartan actually goes to jack a Wraith when it shouldn't. It should have Spartan slammed the mines um, to blow those up before it kills our army. But we manage to trade evenly here. We get our own Spartan slam with mines off and we're still behind the turrets. So trade pretty evenly there so we don't come out with that too badly. And he's forced to back off as well. Picking off a mini with the two ODSTs, it's always good to split off a couple of units like that, especially your ODSTs because those mines are so strong. Uh, so push around, hit our opponent's economy by killing those mini bases. So we saw earlier as well, like if you if you're broke, you don't want to be getting close air support, especially if you you've been pushed in as well. This game's pretty even at this moment in time, and we've got a pretty good economy with the third base coming online. So there's going to be no problem with uh, keeping the close air support over the other leader powers. Obviously. At this point, it becomes situational, so you kind of have to think for yourself uh, in these situations. What leader powers you're going to go, what's going to benefit you. Heals are always good. Putting more points into arch missiles is good. The only problem about putting more points into a leader power is that you have to really make use of that leader power because you want to get to hit it once. And we've got a scout on the ledge on his third base. We know he doesn't have that yet, so our economy is just getting stronger and stronger. Uh, we're now retaking back the power nodes and we're starting to regain some control in this game. We're just hiding the ODSTs around here just to be annoying. I mean, look at that. We forced two wraiths to come back and take down that mini. That's like 1100 blue. Uh, and something like 14 population for him that is not going to be in the next fight because he's going around dealing with those minis where we have two of these T squads running around there and once he once he actually kills those minis we'll go back in and kill them again little things like that can turn a game killing two supply pads maybe a generator on the back mini can really help in the long game so now we've got full pop see a big army in the middle we got a vulture here as well so we should be able to break the shield but still not a lot of base damage and we might get caught out on this ledge with that huge army there so yap is pretty much at full strength we're pretty much at full strength we kill that mini base again and the next engagement could potentially decide this game 
The worrying part is that he has Grunt Dome. He has three leaders that can heal his whole army. He's probably got Beam by now. He has Shade Turrets. He has the Mind Drop. Um, and Cutter doesn't have any disengaged tools such as teleport like the banished have so we get caught with a couple of those leader powers we're pretty much lost the game because our whole army is gone so we have to play this really carefully going to a fair base we're chasing down there that has just been upgraded now we've got shock rounds as well so we're going to be going that cyclops drop that's going to be vet 2 and obviously we've got the stanchion as well so good spider slam goes down here catches the whole army and he prematurely drops his heel. Like, we did no damage there, and he dropped his heel. So we're trying to micro our snipers to the back and keep them out of the engagement there. We've still got some stun tools here with the ODSTs, which come down. I'm going to try and get our Spartan out. He was Vet 1, unfortunately, didn't survive. Drop the ODST mines down, because our opponent seems to have a problem with micro, and he seems to sit in those a lot. Uh, down to 70 population now. We're just going to spam for our lives to try and win this engagement. Get behind our turrets because he's just not losing anything with those heals. And this is the uphill struggle you constantly have against a yeah, yeah player. 54 population. We're just going to keep poking with the snipers. Problem is he does have shade turrets there. So we have to run all the way around to the ledge on the right hand side. Otherwise we would lose our snipers to the shade turret drop. We're probably going to lose this base now. It's not too much of a problem because we are a base up. Uh, we wear too many bases up for a while as well. So we're still not out of the game despite losing that base. It is a disappointment that our economy is going to be set back slightly. Uh, but at least we're surviving. Uh, we're still in the game. And now we get to rebuild our army again. So we're almost full strength, uh, almost got infantry level 3. Now we're just going to build a nice counter ball with the couple of vultures that I mentioned earlier and our leader. Uh, and we're going to go in for a big push. Um, if we can wipe that army, um, we can kill a base with Corsair support uh, and hopefully end the game. We're a bit cheeky there, trying to take his base. He does immediately scout it, unfortunately. At least we denied him picking up the base for at least 20 seconds. So guys, make sure you're always spending your resources. Now you'll notice there I've just upgraded one of my bases uh, to a 7 pad base. Since it is our secondary, we don't want to lose that. But yeah, yeah, we can melt bases. If he goes Locust Methane, melt bases super quick. Locusts are classed as grunts in this game, so they do get the benefit of the buff. So we're going to go in for a push here, we're going to tr he wastes his mines there, we can easily pick them off, we do have detect, we've got the vultures to actually break the shield hopefully and maybe take out that gen at the back, but we're not really expecting a base kill from this, we're just expecting to do a lot of damage, bad micro from myself, the all six snipers actually get killed at the top there. There's a seven pad base, going to be helping our eco and strengthening the base uh, with armor and HP as well. He still hasn't picked up his third base, we've picked up ours. And now it's just a bit of back and forth. Trying to find an opening to basically break that base, kill the army and end the game. It's always tough for you to see against Banished, so thank god we do have uh, these vultures.
And all you want to be doing in these engagements, especially with the snipers and cyclops, is, is just kiting the army. You don't want to get in range. Snipers have such a huge range. Uh, the vulture missile is going down here to break the shield. Grunt down. Now, the priority in these fights is the grunt goblins because they can heal the whole army three times over. Which is why we obviously go stanchion. So we just need to end them as quickly as possible. And then we have a better chance at actually killing the army. We're taking a lot of damage here, but we are wiping his army since he's focusing the base and not actually killing our snipers. We'll upgrade our third bases again now. And very shortly, you'll see the little things we've been doing start to swing in our favor. Um, and we start getting an advantage. You see our opponents slowly withering away. Um, that they have less and less reinforcements, probably because their economy isn't as good as ours because we're on three bases, three mini bases for the full game, uh, and they're on two bases, and they had one mini base. Big engagement going down here. We have enough for the close air support. We go in with the close air support. Unfortunately for us, the base gets cloaked. Uh, please don't shoot me to completely counter 1500 blue we just wasted. But we still have a big army here. He's still backing off. If we can kill that cloaking generator, we'll, we'll be pretty good. That's going to be the main focus for me right now. He has one Grunt Goblin left. He doesn't heal the Cloaking Generator. We still have our drops, remember, so we can win a lot of engagements with the drops. All our snipers eat a nice solid beam on the ledge there. Fair team population, but we have the big drop. It has a Wolverine in it, so it does have Detect. I know he's on his back legs, like, he, his army's struggling here. I'm about to kill it, and I'm about to kill the Cloaking Gen. Um, so, it was worth throwing that drop in there, despite having no reinforcements, because it's a very strong drop as well, and now I can just continuously pump units with a rally point to this base, because I know he's struggling for economy. He can't, he cannot, at this time, rebuild as fast as I can. So, because I'm still on the aggressive, um, I could do a lot of damage here. I'm going to put an Archer Missiles on his economy even further. Must have fortifications because it literally did nothing to that base where it normally does strip a lot of pads. And now you'll see our free upgraded base, his economy, coming in clutch. I'm going to pick off pads and... You just notice he just has no units here to defend. They're just not coming. Because he can't afford them at this point in the game. And that's where all your micro and your split pushes in the early game pays off in the end game. Every little bit you can do, you kill one mini base over and over again. It pays off eventually in the later game. So yeah, that battle had him coming in clutch. Not really, but <laughs> could have won this game a lot earlier. So the player we're playing right now, um, he, is, he is a champ player. Uh, plays Yap Yap a lot, um, so he has good knowledge with him. Not the best Yap I've ever played against, um, and very sloppy play in some parts from myself. Um, but hopefully it has given you a good overview of how to play this matchup in particular on this map, um, as well as how to play Captain Cutter in general and what you want to push to. So I did mention before that general rule of thumb is you want to be going snipers, marines, and infantry against uh, in a UNSC matchup versus UNSC. Uh, and versus banished, you want to be going Spartan marine essentially to deal with choppers. 
that's for the early game. And mid game, you just keep that infantry ball going until you can get into the late game and start getting those tech free upgrades of the stanchion, the shock rounds, and then with all your drops as well. Uh, it becomes pretty tough for people to deal with because you're always winning every engagement essentially with those stuns. Stuns are very effective in this game um, to separate armies and pick off parts and priority targets that you want to, such as the goblins. If they're stunned, they can't heal. And that's what you need to do against Shia. Yeah, prioritize those goblins. So guys, while this game is finishing out, um, this is going to be the end of the Captain Cutter Advanced Guide. Um, I mean, if there's anything I've missed uh, or something you want to know, um, then please do put in the comments below um, so I can include it in the next video. I plan to do a similar guide and keep on improving it for all of the leaders like I did with the beginner's build order guides um, and hopefully give you guys an insight into how this works. Now most people in this situation would be worried if they saw a Scarab, um, but not Cutter. I have 7 Shock Round Cyclops, uh, Archimus is level 3 about to go down. He only has a Scarab, he has no units to support it, he's got the Goblins, uh, Beam we can just split out of, and Shock Round Cyclops with Cutter, with this Vet 2 drop, are extremely deadly to the uh, Scarabs, as you can see how fast it is dropping. And then when he uses his shields, we've got the Vulture Missiles as well. There's nothing at this point in the game he can do. 